The purpose of this video is to cover some of the new functionality that's been introduced in the Acrivia job system with version 11. As you can see from the screen, between version 10 and 11, there's been new fields introduced to capture additional information, mostly around project type jobs, more so than do and charge. So we've got information here with regards to the tender or the quote process estimator. We can actually now do tracking as to the quotes we're doing, whether we were successful or rejected, the reason for rejection, and then some reporting. So it gets some analytics out as to how many quotes we're doing, how many we're winning and losing, what are the reasons we're losing them, etc. We've also got a, a stronger focus on the availability to note project managers, supervisors, estimators, just to gain higher level tracking on our jobs and who's involved for what purpose. Out of that process, we can also look at the jobs from various dashboards. So there's a general dashboard that's existed in the last couple of versions. But we've also introduced a couple of new dashboards around estimators and project managers, allowing them to track the jobs under their care and they can jump into the jobs or look at the revenue side of things. These buttons essentially launch other forms within a Acrivia that you would otherwise be able to open through the menu system. So opening a new quote, jumping to the job information of what you're looking at on the screen, etc. There's a few filters up the top, as you can see, some legend colouring indicating the status of jobs, etc. One of the other major changes in terms of core infrastructure and functionality is around subcontractors. In version 11, we're now tracking subcontractors in their own right from an estimating and an actual tracking perspective. So where previously we had labour and materials isolated to be tracked, we now have introduced a third level of tracking for subcontractors. For the system to know whether or not the estimate and in fact the actuals is a subcontractor cost versus a normal labour cost, perhaps from the payroll system, or even the materials cost, we have to be able to distinguish the estimating codes as well as the actuals that come through. That is done through the use of a stock group that's set up in the system. So in this case, we call it Z sub -pont -er. And every stock item in that group will be seen as an estimating code that relates to subcontractors. So if we go back to the stock maintenance screen here, we come to the last few, we can see there we've got just a handful of items to find. But if those items are used for estimating, the system is going to see those estimated costs as subcontractor related. So coming back to our job here, we can see we have in fact got one of those codes used on this section, and that's why the $2,500 has ended up in the subcontractor column. There is a new tick box on the credit and maintenance screen that allows us to tell the system by default that this creditor is in fact a job subcontractor. They can be a subcontractor in the formal sense of POYG and handling. Certainly there's one of those set up in the system here. So this person has actually got a PAYG agreement, but they don't necessarily have to. They could in fact be a subcontractor who is registered for GST. So the inclusion of this tick here will mean when the creditor invoices are posted in the system, that the tick here, a new column in the creditor invoicing screen for contractor costs will be put in place by default. You can override that, it's possible you'll have a supplier who is also a subcontractor, so they might be providing materials as well as labour costs to the job. So some of the invoices may have that ticked and some may not. We may have different lines on the one invoice that has it ticked and doesn't. In each case, you'd allocate to the appropriate jobs. So. choose the section accordingly. But that is the key that then allocates the costs into the appropriate column 
when the actual invoice is posted, so our actions are updated in the right spot. And the same obviously goes for the reporting system, isolating those subcontractor costs out from labour costs and material costs. You can also see over here we've got the subcontractor totals noted. And the last place of direct impact for this new feature is around the markup or margins that we might want to put on the estimate base. So here we have an example where the stock has come in under the materials, the labour has shown and the subcontractors has been isolated. We can then apply a markup or a margin individually on each of those three or we could apply a flat markup and margin to the totals to arrive at our contract price to our client. The enhancements to the system in this area though relate to the ongoing maintenance of the actual margins at these three levels. So for example, if I put in a flat rate of 15% here, a flat rate of 22% there, and a flat rate of 24% there, that would give me a contract amount to the client of $6,450.41. If I now wanted to round this amount off, so it was a neat amount, let's say I was going to take it up to $6,480 for argument's sake, what the system's going to do is it's going to increase or decrease these margins against each of these areas to try to maintain the balanced integrity of what we're trying to recover in each of these as per the new contract fee. So if I put in there 6480 and press the tab key, all of these have gone up a slight amount. But the reason we're now putting more emphasis on tracking it at this level is that if I now went back at an estimate level, let's say this was a quote and we hadn't won it and locked it in, or that the client came back and pushed us around a little bit, we could add more stock in, etc. The system will try to maintain these margins. So the price here will be changing as we add more stock in, but we'll be trying to maintain the margin on the labour, the materials and the subcontractor, each in their own isolated rate. The contract details side of things hasn't changed. We've still got as many lines as we wish to put in here. We can break it down by sections, etc. Another feature that's been enhanced in version 11 is the associated files. We can actually define a folder structure to be created for all the jobs at the time the job is created. So rather than needing to create new folders for a given job as we go, so rather than creating folders for the job ad hoc, we can actually predefine a folder tree and all of those folders will be created automatically when the job's created, allowing us to just drop our files in there. The balance of new functionality added has actually been included in an extended estimating module. So it's not sold as part of the standard job system and it won't apply perhaps to uh, tracking of jobs at a level where you're not heavily focused on forecasting and detailed work in progress type calculations. For those clients that are investing time and energy into that kind of activity, have a chat with us because there is some new functionality we've introduced that allows the, you to track throughout the system what's actually going on with the job and what is expected to come in the future, thus allowing you to move on to any overruns quickly and also arrive at very detailed work in progress type figures. It's beyond the scope of this video to cover that in full detail. So I'll conclude the video at this point. Give us a ring on the support desk if there is functionality available in the new version 11 job system that you think may be relevant to how you do business. Beyond the obvious, obviously the help file is available to read up on the new functionality as well. Thanks very much.